I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. Oh, why everybody running on this? Oh my god! Uh, welcome to the All Things Rangers Bar Talk, where we are gauging our confidence based on our choice of drink on all these NHL topics. And the one everybody's waiting for, I know they're waiting for it in the thumbnail, Rick Carpaniello came out and said that Artemi Panarin requested to play with Colin Blackwell rather than Capocaco. And that gives David Quinn a pass. John, chomp it at the bit to get at this one. You know what? When I first subscribed to The Athletic about three years ago, when they first really started hiring people, I was like, okay, like, you know what? There's a lot of really good writers, and Harp seemed like, you know, he had his he had his stuff together. But I tell you, this last year or so, he just, he became such a chill for the organization and for Quinn that I'm just like, what are you doing? And he just, it seemed like every passing turn that he got, he would try to defend David Quinn to whatever extent that he could. And no, this does not give him a pass. I am buying shots for everybody. That's what's going to happen here. But um, I don't buy this at all. I really don't. Because Colin Blackwell is a career minor leader. He had about 60 games worth of NHL experience heading to this team. I'm not buying that Artemi Panarin all of a sudden just said, oh, put Colin Blackwell on my line because of whatever reason. Like, I get that he liked having Jesper with him and Ryan Strom, and Jesper Foss did a lot of the, the board work, the dirty work, but I'm not buying this at all from Colin Blackwell. And Carp can say, oh, yeah, that he's the insider, and but the play styles it, it doesn't mesh it just it doesn't fit right and yeah i know that blackwell was more productive there than kako but colin blackwell was also shooting at over 20 percent. and if you think that that is sustainable then i i offer you a first class ticket back to reality because you're in La La Land if you think that's sustainable. It's not. Here's, for, for example, let's just reference something right now. We can all agree that Alexander Ovechkin is the greatest goal scorer of this generation, right? Without a shadow yeah. of a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Probably the second best goal scorer of all time right now. You want to know what his career high in shooting percentage is for a single season? Uh, 11%. 15.4%. Okay. That's the greatest goal scorer of this generation, shooting at 15.4%. You think Colin Blackwell, a guy who was like 27, 28 years old, couldn't even hack it in the NHL for the longest time, is going to sustain at 22, 23%? Get out of here. It's not happening. So, Carp, I, I, I get you love Quinn. And the comment before from Ziga that stated that that carp has been off the rails since uh i i like that one i like that <laughs> cool sean keep them coming because I, I you and me are on the same wing like my friend but uh that comment from ziga i think it says it all ever since the whole canning of gorton and jd carp has he's different He's absolutely different. Um, he's been writing pieces to defend Quinn to no end. I, I don't understand why. There's there's no need for it. There's no need. He's gone. He's gone. What are you getting out of that? He's gone. So let's move on. And I don't believe what he's saying for the life of the <clears throat> shot. This one. You guys feel free to elaborate. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll jump in. I'll jump in first before you do yours. Uh, and... and... Um, I'm, I'm actually going to just take it as a beer. Oh, I'm going to take it as a shot for giving Quinn a pass. Um, but I mean, I, it could be as simple as sort of like when Greg Maddox used to, and by the way, Phil, what about this for your choice? Do you have to choose him or Howden? So, um, Blackwell there, because at least Blackwell showed that he can score you goals, but Brett Howden is just nothing but laps. 
But again, but again, it's it's the coach's job to go. All right, well, you got to go with this guy. This is our future of our organization? And Aaron would understand that because after all, he was in sort of that same situation in Chicago. What if um, uh, Kane was like, "Nah, don't give me this guy." On the other hand, it could also be like when Greg Maddox used to say, uh, "I'll take the defensive catcher to give Javier Lopez a day off," and everybody talked, "Oh, well, does he does he want to throw it to Javi?" And um, People then said, he even said it in press conferences, you know, I'm going to have to throw to him in the playoffs. Don't worry about that. So it's it's just like, it could be both guys just want the puck. And uh, I mean, although I, I don't see Paco handling it nearly as much. He produced a little bit when he was with Stroman um, and Panarin. But it's just, you know, a little bit is made of of this story to be the conflicting personalities, not the conflicting play styles. But again, it's, it's going to be fine. And, uh, Panarin is a team guy. He really is. So he's not trying to destroy the Rangers chemistry. Anthony. No, um, I'm going to go shot. Uh, I don't think it gives quite a pass at all. Cause even if Panarin did request something like that, you know, he doesn't have to grant it. I get one to keep your star player happy, but at the same time, you know, he's the coach, he makes the shots. So, um, but no, he, he doesn't get a pass for that. And if Panarin did request it, I mean, I mean, I guess crazier things have happened. I know Mario Lemieux wanted to play with Rob Brown at some point, you know, Gretzky, Semenko. I think sometimes star players like to play with guys with a little bit of grit just to do the hard work for him, create more space by doing the board work, the board uh, work and all that stuff. So, um, I mean, it's not far fetched, but I mean, I don't I don't necessarily know if I buy it either, but. Yeah, again, even if he did request it, I don't think it gives Quinn a pass at all. So it's a hard shot for me. All right. Uh, and then we're going to come back to you on this one. The Islanders' a cap situation is going to cost them a key piece. So I'll go, I mean, I'll go beer. I mean, if you're talking about, like, yeah, a guy like Sezikis may walk, that could definitely happen. But if, like, by key piece, you're, you know, insinuating, like, they're, they would lose someone, like, you know, Bovillier or, or Nelson, that that won't happen. Those guys are core players. They'll move other guys before they have to do something like that. So yeah, they may lose a guy like Sezikis because of their cap crunch. They won't be able to retain him, um, you know. Or maybe even they can't keep Palmieri. Maybe they lose him, but they're not going to subtract any of their main pieces, i.e., Barzell, Nelson, Pelic, Polak. N- none of those guys will go. So um, I'll go Beer because I do think they are aren't going to keep the team together, like Lou said. So maybe they do. Maybe Letty's a cap casualty or Eberle, but. Um, they're not going to lose a high-end piece. So, beer. Felt. By key piece, like 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 Anthony's differentiating, core or we're just talking like an impact? I guess core. Um, if we're talking about that. That's a shot for me. Man. It's an absolute shot. There's, they're not losing a core player because of the cap situation. Not at least right now. Maybe a couple years down the road. Because eventually, you got to remember, you're going to have to give deals for Oliver Wallstrom, Noah Dobson, um, Ilya Sorokin obviously is going to need a new deal, and then Matt Bar's out in like two years after this one. So, mm-hmm. I mean, eventually it's going to give them a, a, a problem. But right now, no, I'm, I'm going to say shut up. Um, and again, I guess you know what I was I was going to say beer definitely, but you know what I got to say shot now because we need to find what a key piece is. I was thinking Palmieri at first, but no, nah, it's not going to happen. So they're going to try to find a way in there. I think they're still going to lose Palmieri, even though they said they might likely keep him. It's yeah. just uh, I can't see him taking that much of a discount to stay with the Islanders. Um, the Union, I don't think, would let him. Moving on back to the Stanley Cup Finals. Nikita Kucherov deserves the con smite more than Braden Point. And you know what? I think I'll start this one. Oof. Uh, it's getting closer, but uh, I'm going to go beer on this. The reason why is both the, both guys were pressing um, historical territory with uh, Wayne Gretzky uh, for the assists with the Kucherov in the last two years. He's the only person being mentioned with Wayne Gretzky. And Braden Point trying to challenge Reggie Leach and Yari Curry's record. And he still needs to pass Joe Sackick anyway. But it's... It, 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 which do you value more? We kind of argued this uh, earlier in the year about McDavid versus uh, Matthews for the heart. It's uh, goals or points. It's uh, it's that's where it is. But Kucherov, I would have to say, 
He's got a real claim to it after tonight. Who knows? Maybe Point rattles off a hat trick in game two and changes that. Philk? I'm going to reference something that I think I referenced yesterday and I've referenced it before in the past with in other platforms. Alexander Ovechkin winning the Conn Smythe in 2018 over Evgeny Kuznetsov with his 32 point postseason. I, I mean, the assists are great, but goals are a premium. And, and Braden Point is the best playoff goal scorer we've seen in quite some time. Out probably sans Alexander Ovechkin. So um, I, you, you can't really undersell what Braden Point has done. Have a goal of nine straight games in playoffs. I mean, unless the wheels completely fall off in this, if Braden Point finishes with like 17 plus goals in this postseason, I don't see any way that he doesn't win the Smythe. So I, I'm, I'm gonna say shot here. I'm gonna. By the way, uh, I'm not sure if this is a dark horse, but Vasilevsky. And his numbers are ridiculous. They're all <laughs> under two goals against. I, I would actually give him the runner up over over Kucherov if if that ends up being the case because if you think about it, Tampa Bay went from in their first Stanley Cup run, funny enough, they, they beat the Islanders in the first round that year. And Javi Bullen had a historical run that year during during the play. Three shutouts in the finals. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. And now all of a sudden they have all those bad years of not being able to draft and find a goaltender. Your John Grams, your Kyron Rapp, all those guys in between. Then they draft Andre Vasilevsky, and now Vasilevsky is having postseason for the ages. Go figure. Yeah. Uh, but getting back to Braden Point and getting over Anthony, like the goal he scored in game six versus the Islanders, Adam Pellick was on his knees just looking up, going, What do I have to do to stop this guy? So, Anthony, take it over. I'm actually. I'm actually going to go shot here. I, I think I think it's point. I mean, don't get me wrong. Kucherov has the points to show for it. Um, but point's just been more dynamic. Um, I think he's the engine that's really making them go. And Kucherov scored, has gotten a lot of his points on the power play. Um, so for me, for me, it's point. I mean, for instance, that whole series against the Islanders, I know it's hard to fathom. Kucherov did not score one goal against the Islanders that series. Not one. Um I mean, credit to, you know, the Islanders hold him in check, but still, not one. Um, so, yeah, he scored, what, two last night? So, I mean, who knows? He can go off in this round and, and win it. But um, for me, it's Braden Point. I think he's been the most dynamic player. He's been the best player. Um, so, for me, this was easy. Yeah. All right. Two, two quick points before we go on. You talked about how if Kucherov was non-existent, really, in that Islanders series. Bill Radford won the Conn Smythe in 1990 for the Oilers. But if it wasn't for Mark Messier and his performance against the Blackhawks in the, the Campbell Conference Finals, they don't get to that Stanley Cup Finals. Mark Messier drove them past. Not only that, but another analogy I can bring up is Sidney Crosby winning the Conn Smythe two years in a row over Phil Kessel and Matt Murray in 2016 when Kessel led the playoffs in scoring, and then over Evgeny Malkin in 2017. Because, one, he plays a more important position. Two, he's a better all-around player. So when you're taking on the tough matchups, you're still producing offensively, and you're playing a real good two-way game, they're going to recognize that, and they're going to get there. Did you like that video? Of course you did. So why not check out some more of our content? You can check the playlist right here or right here. Ooh, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.